Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurifil, Aurifil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Clothworks, inspiring creativity with art on fabric. Hovels Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Hovels. P&B, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Quiltology, the urban quilt space. Quilty. The fabrics that you use in your quilts need to be read for color and print size. You gotta read them just like you read all that email in your inbox. We're gonna learn how to read fabric today on Quilty. Making a quilt is like painting a picture. And for painters, they use paint, quilters use fabric. And there's things to know about fabric so you can make a really beautiful quilt um, using color and value, these different things we're gonna talk about today so you can go confidently to a quilt shop and uh, buy the perfect fabric and it will all look pretty and you'll be so happy. So the first thing um, to do is to tell you sort of the difference between a large scale fabric and a small scale fabric. That's a really important thing to know. The fabric here on my right, is that right on your left as you're watching, is a what's considered a small print fabric. It's a nice uh, cheery yellow by our one of our fabric sponsors, P&B. We love you guys so much. It looks basically yellow, right? From far away, it only looks yellow. When you get up close, it's, it's a little orange, it's a little yellow, but it still looks generally the same because it's a small print fabric. So it's always gonna read, we're talking about reading fabric, it's always gonna read yellow, pretty much. Kind of a golden yellow, right? Great, so that's a small print fabric. This one is very cool, this is a beautiful fabric, and it is a large print fabric. If you take it off here, you will see some of it is purple and black, right? But it's got these big, juicy, red flowers with a little bit of that sort of taupe, taupe color there too. So this is a large scale print. So if you were to cut this up in little pieces for a quilt, if you would say cut like a two inch square out of this fabric, some of your two inch squares are gonna look purple and black, but some of them are gonna look red, right? This maroon color, because if you cut it out of the part that has the flower on it, it's going to be different. If you're doing a purple and black quilt, you only want this, you fussy cut so you only get that. Um, so, so large scale print, it, it, it reads differently, it works differently than a small scale print, okay? So that is that. Now let's take a look at something, uh, some more colors, colors that work together and some colors that don't work together. So I pulled these different fabrics, starting with this fabric, also a P&B fabric that I love. It's um, these little raindrops. And there's light blue, there's, uh, well, there's actually like a turquoise blue here, there's a, um, a light blue, there's this like grass green and a darker green, and there's this navy blue too. Generally, like the simplest way to design a quilt is to have a first fabric and then build around that using the colors that are in that fabric. So what I did was, and this is all laid out nice, but what I actually do when I'm designing a quilt and I'm putting colors together, I start throwing things in a little fan. I kind of make a pile for myself. And then once I've got things sort of laid out, I just kind of, I start like flipping them around like this. Okay, this, I'm going to pull this, I'm gonna move this over here just to kind of see how they work together. This is your palette, right? This is how you start looking at how the colors work together. And I kind of throw them on top of each other because in a quilt they kind of do end up on top of each other. The reason that I picked some of these fabrics is this green, here, here it is again. It's another, another color that matches this one. And this dark blue, this polka dot here, this has the navy kind of color. It also has that lighter blue, so I like that. That makes me really happy. This raindrop fabric doesn't have any red in it, but I want to put some red in my quilt. So I grabbed this cute red polka dot, right? But I need to have that red pick up somewhere else, otherwise it might look kind of might look kind of crazy. So I got this really cute little flower, flower print. That's got red in it too. There's some yellow, there's some green, so it starts to play together. And if you kind of look at this fan, what happens is when you're just throwing, you throw things together, you try one thing, you audition your fabrics and you're reading these fabrics for color and value and hue. And when I look at this fan, one thing does not look like the other. One of these things just does not belong. And I would say, I mean, can you guess at home? This one, right? This looks kind of weird. It's, it's, I love this fabric, this bandana uh, print. It's amazing, but it's not gonna work in this quilt. And the reason that it's not gonna be so great is because these two reds, they're not the same reds. They're kind of, they're different reds. Let's pull them, let's pull them out of the, out of the pile. They're sort of, 
they're sort of different. This is like a rusty red. This is like a real bright tomato red. So I'm going to take this out. I don't really like it. I'm going to put this back in. This orange is working for me because there's orange in the little flower. This is working for me because it's got the green and the blue. I like it. This one, I don't know. When value is the light and the dark. And like the um, hue, hue is about color. Value discusses light and dark. And these two are just kind of similar. The birds are really cute, but I'm actually going to pull them out. And when I do that, this looks like a nice fabric family. So I like it. Let's do one more example. I'm just going to give that to one of the crew members there. Very handy. I pulled out some more fabric, and we're just going to do a quick uh, auditioning here, too. Once you have tons and tons of fabrics together, they kind of blend better. The, you know, the more fabrics you use, the more you can kind of uh, fudge a little bit. But as we look at this palette, I'm still thinking that this this is not so happy. It's a little too bright. It's a little too white. There's too much white space in it. I'm getting rid of it. This fabric, I love it, but there's really no orange in it. There's some pink, but this blue is confusing me. I'm going to get rid of it too. And as you start taking out the ones that don't look as great, you start seeing, okay, we have a little fabric family here. Let's take another look at some of these things we're talking about in an actual quilt. This is just a quilt top because I haven't finished the quilting on it, but I made this quilt top. And I call it my Diana Vreeland quilt. Uh, read the blog post about it. Um, and what I did here is I took scrappy pinks and I put them with this navy blue. And these are half, half, half square triangles, very simple design. I didn't even use a pattern, uh, but I wanted to use all these scrappy pinks and then slow them down with this navy blue on the other side. And what you're seeing here is, if you look real close at these uh, little triangles, these pink triangles, some of them have a lot of blue in them. Some of them have uh, all pink. Some of them have a little bit of both. But the overall, when you read this quilt, it reads pink and blue with a little bit of white. And that's what happened. This is, uh, you know, all the stuff we're talking about with color and hue and value. This is that in practice. When you're using uh, all, I think there's 60 different fabrics, 60 different pinks in this quilt. And because there are so many, they all start reading as generally pink, even if some of them are more white, even if some of them, you know, have a little green in them, it's still mostly pink and blue, right? That's what we're talking about when we talk about reading fabric. The other thing I want to say to you is that when you go into a quilt shop, quilt shops help you. That with kits and with bundles of fat quarters, they do a lot of that design work for you. So you can go into a quilt shop and they have already, you know, stacks of, of fabric that look great together. So you can be like, I'm just going to do it the easy way today and I'm going to take those fabrics. I love those colors and that's what I'm going to use in my quilt. So you can skip the design process for a little while when you're just starting out and that is okay. So thanks for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit about reading fabric and uh, email us with your questions. Uh, our website is heyquilty.com. We'd love for you to join us on Twitter, Hey Quilty, follow us and Facebook, all that good stuff and um, go out and buy some fabric because it's like shopping for clothes. It's really fun. <laughs> thanks. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Clothworks, inspiring creativity with art on fabric. Havels Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. EMB, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Quiltology, the urban quilt space.